It's time for predictions, where I not only give my pro wrestling predictions for the new year, but I take a look back at my predictions for last year. And I've had some good years. Unfortunately, this was not one of them. Uh, here are my predictions for 2019. These were from Sound Off episode 580 last year. So I'm going to run through uh, what they were. I predicted that EC3 would debut on Monday Night Raw and interrupt John Cena in the middle of the ring the way that Chris Jericho debuted when he interrupted The Rock on Raw back in the day. Boy, was I wrong about that. It makes me really sad, though, when I see what they've done with him or not done with him, and I think back to that idea. Uh, you, I don't think you could have gone as far opposite what they did as compared to the idea that I pitched for this guy last year. That's how much I thought he could have been something. Maybe even not like a top, top main eventer in the company. I'm not even saying that, but just the one thing he really had going for him more than even his in-ring ability, which which is okay. It's not like he's a great wrestler, but it's his, his speaking ability. So to see him verbally jousting with John Cena would have established credibility for him, I think, on night one, and then they could have done, you know, something with him. And they did nothing, and it's all very depressing. I predicted Chris Jericho would challenge Hiroshi Tanahashi for the IWGP heavyweight title at Madison Square Garden. WrestleMania weekend on that ROH New Japan G1 Supercard and lose. Jericho was not even on the MSG show and instead he beat Tanahashi last weekend at Wrestle Kingdom. So I was wrong. I was going to say I'm kind of right. He had the match with, with uh, Tanahashi, but I was I was way off. It was in a, another country. And uh, Jericho had a different championship, although that was not on the line. So, screwed the pooch on that one. I predicted Switchblade Jay White would become the IWGP champion before the year was over. And I was right. It was only five weeks later that he won the title from Tanahashi. I predicted Kenny Omega would strike a deal to wrestle for both All Elite Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I was right. He turned down an offer from WWE to sign a four-year deal with AEW that, according to he himself, allows him to work dates, if he so chooses, for New Japan. And, of course, they have to want him to wrestle, and they, they obviously do not want him to wrestle because they have not made a deal yet. But it is in his contract that if he wants to make a deal to wrestle in New Japan, he can do so. Uh, thus far, that just has not happened. But here's an interesting question that I pose to all of you. Do you think that Kenny Omega made the right decision? Or should he have taken the money from WWE? He said he always wanted a WrestleMania match with AJ Styles, and that may never happen now. You know, four years is a long time, never say never, but it may never happen now. Especially AJ. I mean, by then AJ would, I mean, how old would AJ be? 44, probably? I don't know that AJ wants to keep going for that long. Yeah. And... Omega definitely feels like less of a star now than he did a year ago. There's no doubt about that. To me, anyway. No doubt. No doubt. Absolutely feels like less of a star now than he did a year ago. But did he make the right choice? I still say he did. In spite of that, I still think he made the right decision. But what do you guys think? I predicted that CM Punk would wrestle a match for AEW, and that match would be against Kenny Omega. And not only did he not sign with AEW, uh, he did not wrestle anywhere at all, and instead now he's tweeting insults at The Miz. I predicted AEW would be unable to secure a big TV deal and would have to settle for a smaller station or stream online and build around two to three big shows per year with the Double or Nothing show likely not taking place until later in the spring. Well, I got that right at least. But they ended up with two hours of live television on TNT, so I would call that more than just a small station. So I got that wrong. I predicted that the whole McMahon's TakeOver Raw and SmackDown angle from the end of last year would end up putting Vince McMahon and Triple H in storyline on a collision course with Shane supporting his father and Stephanie supporting her husband. That turned out to be wishful thinking. Instead, we got Shane McMahon as the best in the world for a year. But the idea that I pitched would have had AJ Styles beating Daniel Bryan at the Royal Rumble to regain the WWE Championship. 
and Seth Rollins winning the Royal Rumble match, but instead of fighting for the Universal title, he would challenge AJ Styles for the WWE title, and he would win. So Triple H's guy would get the win. And with Rollins being on the SmackDown roster after WrestleMania, AJ would then move to Monday Night Raw. I thought it would be a lateral move for the two shows, kind of like an even swap. If uh, you have Styles go here, Rollins go there. So this did not happen. I mean, AJ did move to Raw, but uh, this this culmination of the McMahon storyline really didn't uh, go anywhere. It was uh, kind of a waste. I predicted that Braun Strowman would beat Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble to finally capture the Universal Championship. <laughs> well, who looks like the fool now, huh? Who looks like the fool? Because, and my, here was my rationale for it. This was my rationale last year when I pitched this and I predicted this. My rationale was, if at first, second, third, fourth, and fifth you don't succeed, then why not try again? And then Drew McIntyre would go on to win the Raw Elimination Chamber match and beat Strowman to win the championship at WrestleMania. So that was a miss. Strowman was in a battle royal with the SNL guys at WrestleMania, and McIntyre lost to Roman Reigns. I correctly predicted, as I'm sure everybody else did, that Becky Lynch would win the Women's Royal Rumble match and go on to challenge Ronda Rousey for the Raw Women's Championship at WrestleMania. They added Charlotte and the SmackDown title to the match. But it was technically still Becky versus Ronda for the title, so this was a win for me. I predicted John Cena would get his rematch with The Undertaker at WrestleMania, and this time he would come out the winner. Undertaker ended up not wrestling at all, and Thugonomics John Cena made a cameo and did not wrestle a match. I predicted that Andrade Cien Almas would win the United States Championship from Rusev and defend the title against Rey Mysterio at WrestleMania. I was wrong, but maybe only by a year, because it looks like Andrade could very well be defending the United States Championship at this year's WrestleMania. Maybe they build to a mask versus hair match with him and uh, Mysterio or something like that. I predicted that WWE would bring Hulk Hogan back to host WrestleMania. Alexa Bliss was technically the host, but she brought out Hogan at the beginning of the show, who basically kind of served like a co-host. So I'm taking the win on this one. I don't care what anybody says. That was a, that was a win. I predicted that with Vince McMahon's time being taken up more and more by the impending return of the XFL, which, by the way, we're only a few weeks away from the debut of the XFL. I, I will at least be watching the very first game. I can't say that I'll be watching every week, but I, I have to see what this looks like. But with his time being taken up more and more by the XFL, I predicted that Triple H would finally take over the creative reins from his father-in-law for SmackDown Live when it moved to Fox. And that Shawn Michaels and Gabe Sapolsky would both gain more influence in NXT, and as a result of Triple H devoting more of his time to SmackDown, they would kind of fill the gap and take over. No pun intended, as far as uh, NXT is concerned. Now, Shawn Michaels has gained more influence over NXT as Triple H has gotten busier uh, this past year. Triple H, just in an interview, uh, said that Shawn basically now runs the NXT UK brand. He flies out there every few weeks, and he's basically running, running that brand. But I also predicted that Monday Night Raw would put on some strong shows heading into WrestleMania, and then would fall right back into the doldrums, and the lows would keep getting even lower, and they did. Last month, there were a few Raw shows that set all-time low ratings records. I also said by Christmas, the holiday shows would bottom out at about a million and a half viewers. It wasn't quite that low, but they did bottom out around 1.8 million or so. They definitely dropped under 2 million. I predicted that Brock Lesnar would be drafted to SmackDown in time for the big move to Fox, and for the first time since 2004, Lesnar would wrestle a match on SmackDown, probably the premiere episode. And I was right. I was right on the money there. I just didn't know that the match would last eight seconds, or that it would be for sure against Kofi Kingston. But it seemed, it seemed like if I were WWE and I wanted to go all out for my big debut on Fox... And if the network wanted Brock Lesnar, 
then why not have him wrestle on the show? Because that's the one thing he has not done since he came back in 2012. So you want something big to promote on that first SmackDown? Put Brock Lesnar in a match. And that's what they did. I predicted that Ronda Rousey would be drafted to SmackDown before the move to Fox, which she was not. I predicted The Rock would be the headline attraction for the WWE Hall of Fame, which he was not. And that China will finally be inducted, which she was, as part of D-Generation X. So I got that half right. I predicted that Adam Cole would win the men's Money in the Bank ladder match, which he did not. And that Shayna Baszler, if WWE decided not to do a Queen of the Ring tournament, which was sort of being uh, bandied about at the time, then instead she would win the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. And she did not. Although, she did get a win in the main event at Survivor Series. So, they did put NXT over, just not the way that I thought they would. I predicted that we would finally see Horsewomen versus Horsewomen at Survivor Series with Charlotte, Becky, Sasha, and Bayley against Ronda, Shayna, Marina, and Jessamyn Duke. We did not. Ronda took the rest of the year off. And watching more of Marina Shafir and Jessamyn Duke in the months since then, they are nowhere near ready to be on Raw or SmackDown, so I'm glad it didn't happen. And I still don't think, it may never happen at this point, but if it ever does, I still think we're a ways off. Because I just remember reading reports of, they were so impressed, WWE and NXT officials were so impressed with the progress of Marina Shafir and Jessamyn Duke. And look, as two women who probably just got a crash course Never did professional wrestling before. Maybe they picked up on some of the basics quickly. But just having watched pretty much every match they've been in, I have not been impressed. <laughs> I certainly have not been impressed enough to think that they should be on Raw or SmackDown. So I'm, I'm happy that didn't happen. And lastly, I predicted that Matt Riddle would debut on Monday Night Raw the night after WrestleMania to begin his quest, as he has talked about for years, to be the man to retire Brock Lesnar, although he would not be successful. That did not happen. Although, if there is any justice in the wrestling world, he will at least mix it up with Brock in the Royal Rumble match in a few weeks. But there was a guy on Twitter going by the name Manju, M-A-N-J-O-O. -O, okay, Manju. Remember Manju? Remember me mentioning him? Manju called me out for saying that Matt Riddle would end up being a bigger star than Lars Sullivan and EC3. That's a comment that I made. That's the biggest joke I ever heard, he said. He said when he first looked at Riddle, he thought, who is this jobber guy? And I said to him, I said, bookmark that tweet and let's come back to it in the future and we'll see if you still find it funny. Hey, Manju. What do you have to say now, huh? EC3 is basically Dwayne Gill with abs and a nice tan. And, and Lars Sullivan is at home Googling instructions on how to launch a denial of service attack and take down Pornhub. That prediction's looking a lot better than it did a year ago, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Riddle's not quite there yet. But I like his chances right now a lot more than I do those other two. 